Go Chris. Great. Uh, so, hello, my name is Chris Polman. I'm a graduate student here, study astrophysics. I'm a Python fan, I use it for school. Um, and I thought it'd be fun to give a lightning talk on descriptors because, at least for me, they were the most confusing part of the core Python <laughs> language for a long time. And I wanted to figure out why that was and see if I could simplify that and do that in an incredibly short amount of time. How many people have no idea what descriptors are in Python? Okay. Come on, raise your hands. You know you don't. <laughs> How many people have some idea but feel like they don't really get them? Okay, perfect. Um, so I feel like the reason why I didn't understand descriptors for a long time is I think it's hard to find good examples of use cases on Google. So if you Google for Python descriptors, you're very likely going to get this uh, article by Raymond Hedinger, who usually gives very good talks on Python. And this article is fine, I mean, it talks about the protocol of descriptors, and I kind of understand it, um, but I thought the examples were really esoteric. And he talks about like re-implementing <coughs> class methods with descriptors and how you can appreciate Python's dispatch, you know, like patterns and descriptors. I just didn't get it. Like, I didn't understand how in real life I would want to use descriptors to solve things that are hard to do otherwise. Um, and so I'm going to try and introduce, I think, a better use case for descriptors. So here's like a not fully contrived example. Let's say you're building something, um, and as part of it, there's some GUI stuff that's using QT4, and you need to kind of represent email. So you have this form that represents an email. It's got sender, subject, and message fields. Um, and your email object kind of contains widgets for those things. And the idea is that other parts of your code are going to need to be able to kind of programmatically access and set the content in an email. And so the question is, how do you design the email class to give a nice Pythonic interface that meets that functionality? And so the first thing you might try is, okay, you know, just make some explicit getter and setter methods for like the subject field, right? And so inside the set subject method, you go and grab the widget and you update its text field so that the widget always stays synchronized with kind of the state of the email object. Um, and that works, but then the problem is that when you use the email object, there's a lot of these explicit kind of get and set calls that people tend to find a little ugly and non-Pythonic. And if you have hundreds of these in your application, the, the code just starts to feel a little like cr crustier, I guess. And people try to avoid this. Um, and it turns out that Python has a good approach for this uh, use case, and they're called properties. And so in one sentence, properties are basically ways to disguise method calls as attribute access. And the way they work, um, if you haven't seen them before, is you still have the getter and setter methods in your class, those are the same, but you decorate them with these property tags. And what that does is it allows you to write code that looks like this, basically. You create the email object, and then you just grab the subject and treat it like it was just a normal attribute, a piece of data stored inside the class. And Python is smart enough to recognize that subject is a property, and so when you try and grab it, it automatically runs the getter method and returns the result for you. And likewise, if you try to assign something to a property, Python automatically runs the setter um, uh, method and then just whatever you need. Is there a question? Are you going to go slow on this slide? Sure, yeah, it's slow. It's only got five there's, minutes. There's two things yeah. that are def defined there, and they're both called subject. Could you talk a little about that? Yeah, sorry. So, um, yeah, okay, I didn't want to go into too much of properties, but just kind of take my word for it that these are, this is a getter method and a setter method. If you want to like look more in detail at properties, look up the documentation for that. But these property tags kind of let that magic happen and prevent a name crash. Okay, so that's very nice, and that's more Pythonic. Um, the problem is that even in this simple form, um, there are three fields that you need to kind of create this interface for. So you have three pairs of getter and setter methods. You don't need to read this, but you just need to know that it's long and ugly. There's a lot of repeated logic in here that you're basically just grabbing a widget and updating its field. So while the interface to email from the outside looks nice, the implementation is still kind of gross and unPythonic. And so this finally, I think, is what the use case for um, descriptors are. In my opinion, the one sentence description of descriptors is there are properties that you can reuse. So I almost like to call them property classes. So anything you can do with the descriptor, you can also do with a property, but they have this nice feature that they're their own object, and so you can kind of reuse them over and over. So if you find yourself using properties and you're repeating logic a lot, that should be like a clue that you might want to think about extracting that logic out into a descriptor object and using that. So let's see that for the email example. Um, I'm creating this descriptor object called text wrapper. I haven't shown you what's inside of it right now, but just know that it's wrapping <coughs> around one of these widget fields. And it's a descriptor because it basically has this dunder get method that's what defines something as a descriptor in Python. And before getting into what's inside that class, just notice how simple the email logic becomes. We basically created <coughs> three of these descriptor objects, and each of them gets the name of the widget that they're in charge of. So the sender descriptor gets the sender widget, et cetera. And then inside the init method, we actually just create those three widgets. So here's the sender widget that the sender descriptor is in charge of. And so the question is, if you kind of take that email class and you create an email object, 
and you try to grab e.sender, what happens? Well, Python treats this specially, just like it treats properties specially. It recognizes that e.sender is something that's defined at the class level with a git method. And when that happens, Python automatically calls that git method and returns the result for you. So now we can look at what's inside that method. Basically, the first thing, oh, there's one argument that's passed to the git method. It's the thing to the left of the period, so the email instance here which it needs because these were defined at the class level before there were any email instances. That's kind of a weird thing about descriptors. But basically, <laughs> the first line of that function uses git adder to actually look up the widget it's in charge of by name. If you haven't seen git adder, you can look it up. Um, and then the second thing it does is it just returns the text stored inside that widget. So it's very similar to the logic of a property. Likewise, if you try to assign something to a descriptor, it calls the set method if it exists automatically. And so again, we look up the widget and then we update the state of that widget so that everything stays in sync. And so what we have is that nice kind of Python interface from the outside that uh, properties gave us. We also have a really nice interface in the kind of implementation of email itself. We're basically just defining some data fields and creating some widgets. So that's pretty slick. There's very little logic to get confused by. And the price we pay is we have this admittedly kind of semi-ugly descriptor class. And it's just generally true that descriptors tend to be uglier because you have to play tricks like using git adder and kind of playing around with things that are defined at the class level. Um, but overall, if you're kind of doing something in Qt, for example, where you had hundreds of these kind of text fields that you're trying to create interfaces for, um, you can see that this would start to pay off and you could reuse these things over and over again. So that's what I wanted to say. Thanks.